Hey everybody, so I guess you can tell my videos this week are a little bit wonky compared to uh, normal weeks. We haven't done much cooking this week because we have had a busy, busy, abnormal schedule been this away, week. We've been away from home a lot. Uh, away from home. We haven't been at home hardly at all. In fact, my house is in disarray just because we come in and kind of throw things and then go again. But this morning, where are we headed? Oh, heart, he's yawning. I the, caught him yawning. To the heart doctor. We're headed to the heart doctor. It's just a checkup. And um, he's actually his doctors have actually been changed. One has... Did he retire or just leave? Uh, I think he retired. Yeah, I think so too. Anyway, so we are meeting his new doctor today. And so we are en route there. And you're going with us. I do ablation. I, I, I do a call actually. Um... Hey guys, let me jump on here real quick and tell you that after we left the doctor's office, Brian and I real quick ran a few errands. He um, had to get a couple of things. We went and uh, worked. He has a laptop charger that's not working, so we went by Best Buy. We stopped and got us some lunch, and then I headed to the grocery store. So that's where I'm going to take you now. We're going to run into Walmart for a little bit. I'll come back, share with you my grocery haul, and then give you a quick update on the outcome of the doctors. I always come through the chick the kitchen gadgets and just kind of look around to see if there's anything new out there like this is really cool and um, it's a cookie spatula but what I would use it for is when I chop onions to transfer it I use my pastry um, spatula now that's what I use now but this would work great as well Another thing I have picked up is I just grabbed this little pack of skewers. Um, they are great cake testers. Um, sometimes the toothpick just doesn't go far enough and a knife may be too big. And so I often use either a skewer if I have it or I'll use a thermometer to check my cakes. So I always walk through the chicken. <laughs> Why do I keep saying chicken? the kitchen aisle to see if there's anything else you need. Got some green peppers. Green peppers. What are they for? We're going to make kielbasa, onions, and peppers, and sauerkraut, but uh, like hot dogs. Sounds delicious. So it was a real quick stop at Walmart. I did not get a lot, but I'll tell you what I got and what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so we're going to start down here on this end of my dining room table. Okay, so I got us some green peppers. I have onions, but I got us some kielbasa. I'm going to slice that up, saute some green peppers and onions. And these are like hot dog buns with the slit on the top. And I thought I would put the onions and peppers and kielbasa down in there and I also picked up some sauerkraut to um, it is pouring down rain just all of a sudden um, to put on top brown sugar powdered sugar because we're gonna be doing some bacon I got some loaf bread for Bryant for sandwiches um, salting crackers just because we always need those and Ritz we snack on those a lot Heavy whipping cream, that's something I always keep around. I got Bryant some decaf um, coffee pods because um, he likes to drink those at night. Here is the sauerkraut I purchased to go on the buns. Sour cream, I have a, um, a quick and easy beef stroganoff and of course it calls for sour cream. 
I got the crescent roll dough sheets because Judah Bug, he has to have his sausage casserole when he comes to bubbles. Tonight, we're going to do my easy, just nothing homemade about it chicken pot pie, and it calls for that. I have a recipe that will probably make probably closer to Christmas, maybe around Thanksgiving, but it calls for sparkling sugar. Now, this is sanding sugar, which I understand that sparkling sugar is a little bit bigger than the sanding sugar, but I think my, as far as texture goes, I would prefer the sanding sugar, so that's what I grabbed. I have some pumpkin salt and pepper shakers, so I need to fill them up. So I got some salt and some pepper. This chicken gravy also goes in my chicken pot pie recipe that I'm making tonight. Cream cheese, just because we always need it, and Judah needs it for his sausage casserole. Let me reach down here and I'll go ahead and grab the sausage that'll also go in the sausage casserole. Um, I needed some ground ginger for multiple things. It goes in my Korean beef as well as uh, any kind of spice cookies we may make. Now, we don't go through a lot of creamer, believe it or not, after I'm buying this ginormous thing, but uh, I still use my liquid sweet cream creamer, but we, um, I do purchase this, and he'll fill up a small container, and it will last us forever. Okay, and so here we have the sour cream, the cream cheese and chives crackers, Judah and Levi love to snack on those as well as I do. Got us some potato chips for when I make the kielbasa uh, rolls things. Uh, we always want a little side of potato chips. I got these for cake testing. I mentioned that I believe in Walmart. Butter, because I always need butter. And if you know me, you know I always buy salted butter. These are for our chicken pot pies. I'm going to actually go stick those in the freezer real quick because I need those cold because if you remember, I crumble one of them on top of the other. I like the crumbled because there's something about the texture, the way it does, it layers, and it's just, I love it when it's crumbled and I love the way it looks. So that's just a preference. Uh, and then Dawn dish detergent, um, shaving cream. Now this I bought because I just wanted to try it. Uh, let me just go ahead and say it is expensive. So what I plan on doing it, if I like it, is just have my other toothpaste <laughs> and this as my Sunday toothpaste. But we're going to give it a try and see how it does. But it was pretty expensive. I bought these for some muffins. Um, but those are the ones I'm thinking about making closer to Thanksgiving. So I'll just stick those up in my baking cabinet. And when I need them, I need them. And these, these are absolutely wonderful. I bought the kind that has almost a little brush on the end. Now this does too, but the others were, had like a metal stick and then a brush around it and they bent so easily. These are wonderful. Um, I, as I've gotten older, I just cannot stand any, any food or anything stuck in my teeth. I can feel it and it drives me insane. So, um, Bryant will be glad that I don't have a drinking straw trying to pick my teeth with it if I have these. He'll, he'll be glad of that. So, there is our grocery haul real quick. Let me put the cold stuff up and then I'll come back and give you an update on the doctor's appointment. All right, so I thought I'd give you a brief update on uh, the doctor's appointment. It, it, we did not get the, what we were expecting, but um, first of all, let me just say, Brian is fine. He is fine. But um, he, if you remember back a couple of years ago, I think it was in 22. I'm pretty sure it was in 22. Brian had to have an ablation because he had developed AFib. Now, AFib is just an electrical disorder in the heart. And it's not really based on, you know, uh, cholesterol or anything like that. It's just an electrical current is not working right. It's, it's firing too many times or not enough times. There, it's, it's electrical in nature. It's not, has anything to do with necessarily the health of the heart as far as, um, anything like that, but it is electrical in nature. 
So what they do is they go in and they they kind of make a little bitty ring of scar tissue that the they still fire, but they can't get through that scar tissue. And um, so in 20, I think it was in 22, he had the ablation, which is where they create the scar tissue. Um, it worked well for a few months, and then shortly after, he just started developing AFib again, or flutters. Now, he does not have your typical AFib. When someone is in a typical AFib, their heart rate usually goes really fast. His stays really it's slow, um, but um, it, it doesn't speed up, but he just misses beats. And um, so, anyway, that has started. So, we went back to the doctor, a follow-up after that at some time, and the doctor said, okay, well, let's, let's go back up on your medicine, the, the AFib medicine, and uh, we'll watch it, but we can always do another ablation. And he offered the ablation actually at the time and Brunt was like, no, let's just wait it out. Let's just do medicine. And um, so now fast forward a year to where we are now. Um, so, so that's actually been two years since his ablation. Um, he still has occasional AFibs and it's pretty regular it's not you know it's pretty much weekly or bi-weekly um, and uh, the doctor says well that is basically what we would call a medication failure the medication is not working and so they did schedule him for a second ablation but that's going to be several months down the road there's also a few other tests that they are going to run um, just to check the actual health of the heart, not just the electrical part, but the, the rest of the stuff, the arteries, to see if they're clogged, you know, to see, see if there's any health of the heart other than electrical things that need to be addressed. Um, and don't get me wrong, AFib is the health of the heart, but it's, it's not, AFib is electrical in nature where other things are physiological and um, you know, have to do with the vessels and so forth. So, um, anyway, so they we've there's about two or three tests we're scheduled for, as well as the we're going to do a sleep study. We're also going to do um, I think it was an angiogram. I don't know what the other one was. Um, it's a CT in nature, so that it'll, it'll, he'll be ha having the contrast and having a CT of, of his heart um, and vessels. And then um, also they have scheduled him for the ablation. Now that's several months down the road. The doctor is booked way out, um, and, and it's not an emergency. But, um, you know, we were hoping they could just up the medication. But I'm actually glad because we found out that the medication has risk of its own. And if it's not working, if it's not doing its job, the risk far outweigh the benefit of being on it. So I'm actually thankful that they are taking him off. They are starting a new medication. And so we'll just see. We're just going to wait and see. And, um, but yeah. It was not what we were expecting. We, we actually thought they may just leave it as is or up the dose a little bit. But hey, as his wife, I'm glad because the risk of the medication, um, I, I don't want him on it if it's not working. So anyway, but y'all just keep him in your prayers. He is fine. He is just fine and hunky-dory. I've sent a message to the family and said, listen, we're all going to chip in and do what we can to lighten Daddy's load, and um, he's going to be fine. So, anyway, all right, I just thought I'd give you a quick update since you knew we went. Nothing to worry about, but anyway, all right, we will see you guys um, next time. Hey, listen, you don't want to miss the next video which is tomorrow's video. You don't want to miss it. We are going to be making a cake, a cake I've never made. I don't think I've ever tasted. So it is very interesting sounding. And so we're going to have fun making this cake tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to do a little prep tonight ahead of time for the cake. 
but I'm going to finish putting the groceries up. I put all the cold stuff up, so now I'm going to go put the rest of the stuff up, and I'll see you guys next time on the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.